My husband left me and my three children because I called the police. A little backstory, I, 27F, and my husband 26M, have been together for four years. I have two daughters from a previous marriage, and we have a son together. I work a full-time job during the day, and throughout most of our relationship he has been unemployed. I made him get a job as we started falling behind on bills and I was both physically and mentally exhausted. Once he started working, he would work overnight and take care of the children during the day while I was at work. The problem comes in when I found out that he would take a nap around 11 a.m. and stay asleep until I got home around 3 p.m. Most of the time he would take the three-year-old, which is his son, to the bed with him and lock the four-year-old in the kid's bedroom. He would usually give them a communal bowl of dry cereal before deciding to take a nap. Since the four-year-old was locked in her bedroom whenever she had to go bathroom, she had to make the choice of peeing herself and getting in trouble from him for having an accident or take her pants off and pee the floor. Due to this the kids' room reeks of pee. We recently had an ice storm that pretty much shut down the city, as the city we live in a city that doesn't really get ice slash snow often. I was stuck at work because I was already at work when the snow slash ice started. His work closed for the whole week and schools also closed the whole week leaving him alone with all three of the kids. We have one working car, and it is in his name, that is important to the story. On Tuesday that week he made me drive home on the icy roads in a car that I have never driven on ice or snow. I told him that I was not comfortable driving home in his car, but he said that the kids were driving him crazy, and he needed me home. So I drove home on ice so thick that you couldn't see the lines on the road, the car did not have four-wheel drive. I made it home safe and told him that since I made it home that I will still go into work on Wednesday. His response is that I wasn't allowed to drive his car for the rest of the week because he did not want me to go back to work. That caused me to call out for Wednesday and find someone willing to drive me to work Thursday. Since I was home all day Wednesday I know the kids did not get locked in the room and they got fed three meals plus snacks, it was the first time in a while that they did not come to me saying that they are starving. Thursday comes and he takes his nap around 11 like usual. The difference is that his work was debating on opening the day depending on if they had enough staff to make it in. So he calls me and asks if my grandparents or aunt could take the kids for the night. When I told him that they are going to have to talk it over he said never mind and went back to sleep. At that point he had told me that he gave the kids some rice for breakfast and a Nutrigrain bar before nap. 3 p.m. came and I could not get a hold of him. We have a security camera in the living room that can be accessed by phone, so I opened the camera to see if I could see him or the kids in the living room. The apartment was dark but I could hear the kids. The three-year-old had opened the door to the kids' room so they were playing in the hallway. I called them over the camera and asked where my husband was. They told me that he was still asleep and that they are hungry. At this point I called my mom and asked if she was willing to go to my place to give the kids food. She agreed and got them McDonald's. I was hoping that she would get there before he woke up as he hates my parents. That was not the case, he woke up and called me before my mom had gotten the food. When I told him that I called in a favor and someone was brining the kids food he asked who. I tried to just leave it that it was just a favor from someone because I knew that if he knew it was my mom that he wouldn't let her in. I was right as soon as he found out it was my mom he took the kids to the very back of the apartment, turned off all the lights and stayed there. When I called to let the kids know that food was there for them they would get excited and start to get up but then they would look at my husband and stay where they were. My mom ended up calling the police after knocking three or four times. When the police got there he called me pissed off. I told him that this could have been avoided if he just answered the door or let the kids answer. The police knocked three or four times before he answered the door. At that time I had spoken to the police officer through my mom's phone and told her what was going on. My husband still had all the lights off and Barley opened the door. He claimed that he did not know that anyone was bringing food and argued with the officer for a minute before letting the kids get the now cold McDonald's. After the police and my mom left, he video called me to show me that the kids had the food my mom brought. About a minute into that phone call he says, I guess I should come pick you up from work because apparently I'm not a fit father and shouldn't be alone with the kids. He knows that I cannot just leave my job without losing it. I called one of the people in charge and asked if I could have my kids here. I also called the police to be a neutral ground between us as it was a very long and bad day. When he got to my work, I took the kids out of the car and brought them in the building. He parked behind the building and came in. I would bring his laptop to work for entertainment and to do schoolwork, I am in college for a business degree. He came in and took the laptop to the car. By that time the police had shown up. 
When the officer got there, he said he got a call for domestic violence. I told him that I was the one who called and just needed a middleman in case things escalated. I didn't think things would but figured better safe than sorry. I told him that the kids was going to stay with me and before I could finish the sentence he left. I did not have a change of clothes for the kids or pull-ups for the youngest. So I called my mom and asked if she could watch them for the night. I spent the night at work as I did not have a way home. Friday afternoon I got a text from him saying don't worry about the apartment I'm not there. Which led me to ask where he was. He said that he drove to Texas and was not planning on coming back. When I asked why he left he said you who I should have been able to trust above all else betrayed me. How can I trust anyone who distrusts me so much that they called the cops on me? Now this would be different if it was the first time he had not properly fed the kids. And every time I suggested that we change schedules so he works during the day and I work overnight he shut it down. He also shut down sending the younger two to daycare so that way we know they are being taken care of and he can get the rest he needed. Since he shut down every idea to make sure that everyone was taken care of I fell back into a corner and could not let my babies go hungry through most of the day. With that being said I did not want my husband to leave. Am I the asshole? Should I have done something different? My friend told me she loves me 4 weeks before her marriage. My, 35M, friend B, 35F, just told me she loves me 4 weeks before our marriage and I am not sure what I am supposed to do here. I want to know if I am doing the right thing. To give some context, I lost my wife two years ago. I have a five-year-old daughter. I have not dated in the last two years because I have major trauma from losing my wife. I still love her a lot and don't think I am ready to move on. I invested all my time in my daughter, who looks exactly like her mother, and my work to keep my sanity for the last two years. I have been friends with B since we were in elementary school. We lived in the same neighborhood growing up and were best friends. She is an awesome person, and we were inseparable growing up. The weirdest part was we had completely different personalities. She was very outgoing and always had a lot of friends. I am a big introvert and B along with a few friends was all I needed. B was a serial dater and I don't remember any time since middle school since she was single. B and I never dated though. B and I also went to the same college. She never had a stable boyfriend, but just jumped from one relationship to another. I, on the other hand, did not date seriously until I was in my junior year. When I met my wife, she was a freshman and we hit it off instantly. We fell for each other and spent all our time with each other. This strained my relationship with B as I would generally hang out with my wife instead of her. That was the time B and I slowly started drifting apart. After college, I moved to a different town for my job and B and I occasionally messaged each other, but nothing beyond that. B attended my wedding and that was the last time I saw her. We kept in touch, but mostly by commenting on each other's pictures or keeping each other updated on significant life events. B did reach out to me when my wife passed away and we talked on a phone call. Last year, B and her fiancé moved to my city. I was still grieving and both have been amazing support for me and my daughter. My daughter loves dancing and B helped me enroll her in dancing and gymnastics classes and sometimes takes her to them. I also became good friends with her fiancé, who is indeed an incredibly good man. My daughter also loves Auntie B and B sometimes helps me babysit. Last week, B came to my house and asked if we could talk. Her tone sounded serious. She told me that over the last few months, she feels like she has started to develop feelings for me and is not sure anymore if she wants to go ahead with the wedding. She felt I also had started developing feelings for her. I told her that I'm not ready for any relationship before I could deal with my mental health, for which I go to a therapist regularly. She tried to convince me that she loved me, we are soulmates, and she felt that we were meant to be together. However, I do not have the same feelings for her. I love her as a friend, but nothing beyond that. We were both emotional, but she said she was glad we talked about this. She left after that. B called me that night and told me not to talk about our conversation to anyone. I thought a lot about it and decided that I would not tell her fiancé about B and my conversation from last week. I feel it's their relationship and I do not have the right to ruin their moment if B decides to go ahead with the wedding. However, I feel guilty that her fiancé does not know anything about this and is going into a marriage where B might not be fully ready for it. Can you guys give suggestions on what I should do in this case? Am I an AH for not telling her fiancé about our conversation? Update. A month ago, I. 35M 
wrote a post regarding my friend Bree, 35F, telling me that she loved me only four weeks before her wedding. The last month has been crazy and my whole world has turned upside down. Again for context, I lost my wife two years ago and we have a five-year-old daughter. Bree and her fiancé Jason, 33M, moved to our town a year ago and we have reconnected as friends and they have done a lot to cheer me up during this year and bring my life to normalcy. After Bree told me that she loved me, I told her that I was still not ready to move on as I still miss my wife. She said she understood and I did not hear from her or Jason for a few days. The guilt was killing me as I was not sure if I should tell Jason about what she told me. Thanks to everyone who commented on the post, it helped me think the situation through. I finally called B after a few days and asked her to meet me for lunch. I talked to her and asked her if she was going ahead with her wedding. She broke down and told me she was not sure. I told her that she should at least talk to Jason regarding her feelings and not be dishonest with him. I also assured her that I would not say anything to Jay, but I just wanted her to be happy. She said she understood and left. That night I put my daughter to sleep and was watching TV. Around 9.30 PM, I heard a loud knock on my door and it was Jason. I opened the door and he was in tears. He started yelling at me and asking me why I had to steal Bree out of all the people. I tried to calm him down, but he just kept on shouting. I was trying to get him to sit down on the bench on our porch. I told him my daughter was sleeping upstairs, but he slowly was getting more and more physical. He punched me in the face and I was able to push him off. I told him to get out of my house and he sat in his truck and drove away. I immediately called Bree and she was crying and did not sound well on the phone. She told Jason that she could not marry him because she had feelings for me. I was really scared for her after the physical altercation with Jason and told her to gather some clothes and get out of the house. She did that and came to my place. I just didn't feel she was safe with Jason. I consoled her for almost two hours and was able to get her to sleep. The next morning, we had to call her parents to let them know about what had happened. Bree kept a brave face, but I could see how much she was hurting. Her parents asked her to take a few days off and immediately come back home and she did take a flight in the evening to go home. Over the next two weeks, the wedding was called off. Bree and I were talking every day and she was just very exhausted. She talked to Jason a few times and kept on asking her to take more time to think. However, I think Bree just wanted to get out of it and decided to just break it off with Jason. Currently, Bree is staying with us for the last two weeks. She still has a job here and started going back to work last week. I have talked to Bree in detail about what happened. Bree told me that Jason and her were dating on and off for the last four years. Jason is not very career oriented and Bree is very good at her job. She felt he was a nice and reliable person, but was unsure about him from the start. She felt that she was not getting any younger and hence they decided to get married. When she heard about my wife passing away, she just felt really bad and wanted to be around me to comfort me. When she got her big promotion, which meant she could work in a corporate office, she immediately chose my city and moved here. Jason also moved here and got a new job. She never had any romantic feelings for me back then. As she started hanging out with my daughter and me, she started feeling the bond we shared when we were growing up. Except, I was the broken one and she was taking care of me. She said that she realized that she was enjoying her time with us more than with Jason. She realized she made a mistake with Jason and what she wanted was right in front of her. Hence, she slowly started thinking about me in that way and finally told me about it. She knew her relationship with Jason was over the moment she confessed to me. It's a shitty situation, but I'm glad that she realized that before getting married versus after. As for Jason, I feel bad for him. He is moving back to our hometown closer to his family. He is currently in their apartment and will move sometime next month. I know a lot of you would be curious if we were dating. We are not dating. I don't think I can date anyone right now and neither should Bree. She is my friend and I am happy that she is staying with us and plans to be here until everything is sorted out. My daughter loves having Auntie Bree around too, so that's a bonus. Plus, it's really nice to see her slowly get back to normal. Thanks again for helping me during my last post. Cheers! What's your advice for this situation?